So once you've got the hang of the basics of Webflow, the natural next step is to start thinking about interactions to make the site a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting, and really to separate it from what's more like a beginner type website to something that's a little bit more polished and a little bit more professional. So in this video, I wanted to create just a simple sign up uh, kind of website, and I'm gonna show you the design process and the Webflow side of things uh, for some hypothetical ebook that I came up with. And it's just gonna be a simple one pager, but in that I'm gonna cover all the basics of having some simple interactions, which should give you a really good overview of how to create your own interactions in Webflow. So let's get started. Before we get started, there's two main concepts that I want you to grasp, triggers and animations. So trigger is just something like clicking or scrolling, hovering, moving the mouse over a particular element or loading the page. And then the animation is just what happens after that trigger. And I like to remember that by just thinking, if this happens, then that happens. So if you can kind of get your head around that, it's gonna make uh, using the Webflow interaction interface a little bit more easier to grasp. So what I like to do before I get started on the Webflow side of things is just create a quick wireframe either on the iPad or on a piece of paper just to get all my kind of ideas I have in my head uh, down on a piece of paper and this generally makes the process of kind of developing it in Webflow a little bit more straightforward for me. To do this, I'm using a really nice app for the iPad called Concepts. Uh, I'm just doing it really, really roughly, just with my uh, finger for now. But if you wanted to, if you have the Apple Pencil or an iPad Pro, you could take a bit more time doing this. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the wireframe now. So I'm going to take it into something either like Sketch or Figma now to mock it up a bit more accurately. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the design now, so it's time to jump into Webflow and get started bringing this to life. So I've just created a new project in Webflow, and now it's just a question of mocking this up to match what we created in Sketch, and then we can get started on bringing it to life with some of those interactions. So I've just finished piecing together the design that you saw in Sketch in Webflow. So now we have all the basic layout created and everything styled correctly uh, as according to the design that you saw. So now it's time to take a closer look at how we create the interactions on Webflow. And then hopefully you can take what you've learned and play around with some of the other triggers and things like that in your own project. So to set this up, let's select our first element. So start with the uh, nav brand wrapper I just called it and we head over to this right hand panel um, and hit interactions or the uh, shortcut for that would be H and then this is the interactions panel and right now you can see it's pretty empty and we get some nice clear instructions from Webflow that say um, element trigger we can select an element on the canvas which is what we've done and then click on this little plus icon above to animate the selected element when a user interacts with it, such as on hover and or on click. And this is what I explained in the little video intro. So we're just gonna hit that uh, plus icon and you can see we basically get a drop down of our different interaction trigger options. And as I mentioned, um, we're gonna do this on page load and we don't see on page load as an option here. That's because this is an element trigger. So this is specifically reserved for when uh, you interact with an element such as hover on it or click on it, uh, move your mouse over it and stuff like that. Underneath, you can see we have the page trigger here, which uh, gives us a few different options, which uh, gives us uh, options if we move the mouse into the viewport. If we're scrolling a page, once the page loads, or if the page is scrolled. And as I mentioned, as this is just a one page website, we can just simply go to page load because that's going to be our main 
trigger. So now we basically have two further options, uh, three further options, sorry, that allow us to trigger the animation when the page starts to loading or when the page finish, uh, finishes loading. So for us, we want it to, to start on when the page finishes loading. So we can just go on here, select an action, and then we're gonna go start an animation. And then timed animation, we don't have any yet. So we can just again, click on the plus, and this is where all the magic happens in this uh, actions panel here. So we're just gonna give this a name. So we're just gonna call it page load. And then we can once again, hit the little plus icon. And because we still have that brand wrapper selected uh, in our canvas, whatever we adjust here is going to only uh, refer to the element that we have selected. So as I mentioned, I kind of want this, 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 and this to all kind of fade in from the left-hand side one by one. So we can start by just adding a, a move. So I selected move there and at the bottom, this is where we can basically control how our element is gonna start. So it's starting position. So I'm just gonna basically give it minus, something like minus 50 uh, pixels. And then we're also gonna to want to set this to uh, the initial state as well to make sure that it starts in that position and it's not gonna do a weird move uh, back before it moves forward. You want it to start in that minus 50 position there. And still with the brand wrapper selected, we don't want it to be visible. So we can just click on here again. I'm just basically, when we have this little blue line and this little plus icon in our mouse, we can just click on plus. And then I'm gonna go down to style. Uh, and hit on the opacity. And then I'm gonna set this opacity that's down at the bottom here to zero. And again, we can just drag this up here to make sure that that zero um, opacity is our initial state. And as you can see, our updates, um, when we have this interaction open is previewed basically in the canvas on the left-hand side. So we can see a bit what we are doing. Um, so again, we wanna keep this selected and we're basically gonna click on move again. So what we've done now is just set the starting positions. Um, so now we need to decide where this element is gonna end up after the animation is finished. So it's point A to point B. Uh, if this, then that was what I was saying in the video introduction. So hopefully it kind of is starting to make a little bit more sense now. So basically we're just gonna to want to go down here and select this uh, X property to zero. And that's gonna basically bring it back to its original position. So if you remember, we moved it minus 50, then we're gonna move it back to zero. And here we can set the duration of that movement. So right now it's 0 0.5, which is absolutely fine. We can keep it like that. And then here we have the easing panel, which basically allows us to um, you know, play around with the easing. So right now it's just gonna be a linear move. So it's, uh, yeah, not gonna be super smooth and sleek. So we can kind of play around with the different easing settings. And for this uh, one and for all the others, I'm gonna select ease out. That's one of my favorites that I use. Yeah, and then the final thing that we need to do on the brand wrapper is just once again, add a new transform property on the style and set the opacity back to 100%. And again, we're gonna set this to ease out and give it a duration of 0.5. And we're gonna drag this up to link it with the movement so that it kind of happens at the same time and not one after the other. So if we left it like this and I preview, you're gonna see it's gonna move and then it's gonna fade in. Uh, but if I put this together, we're gonna get the effect that I wanted, yep, which is that kind of ease in. And you can see when we click on this little play button, it's gonna uh, appear on the canvas there as well. As I mentioned, uh, I want all these kind of elements to fade in in a similar way on page load. So the cool thing about the Webflow interactions is that we don't have to create separate page load triggers for each individual item. We can just house them all under one page load because they're all gonna happen on, on page load. So it makes it a, a little bit more easier to manage instead of having like multiple page triggers, we can just um, stick it all under one. So I'm just gonna click back into what we just created. So you can see we have the one that we just created on page load and we can give it a preview to refresh us uh, of what we just created. And then we can just hover over it and click on the settings button and then we're back into the interactions kind of creation uh, action interface. And we can basically do uh, exactly the same process as we just did. So let's just go straight into the title wrapper. And again, we're gonna to want to click on that little plus button. We're gonna to want to set this to minus 50 or even minus 30 because it's quite a large element. 
and we're gonna to want to drag this up to make sure it's set to minus 34, the initial position. And then again, we're gonna to wanna to set this opacity to zero and set that to the initial uh, state. But this time, instead of linking it together like we did for the brand wrapper, as I mentioned, I basically want everything to kind of come in one by one. So this, then this, then this section, and then these little bits at the end. Um, so to do that, we're just gonna basically click just underneath what we created uh, before on the logo wrapper there. So we can just click on this. And again, we're gonna click on move and then set the X value back to zero to bring it back to its original position. And then click on opacity again. I'm gonna drag it up so that it's combined. Set that to 100%. And again, we're gonna kinda of wanna put some kind of easing on it. Again, let's do ease out. Ease out for both the move and the opacity. Now you can see if I play this, we're going to get the brand come in and then the title wrapper come in as well. So that's looking pretty nice so far. And then it's just more of the same really. So maybe for this bottom section, uh, instead of it coming in from the side, it could come in from uh, the bottom. Um, so let's create, uh, select this whole uh, div block that I have here. And this time let's go move and instead of adjusting this X axis, we can adjust how it sits on, on the Y. So let's set it to something like minus 30. Again, drop the opacity down to uh, zero. To make sure that those two are connected and then bring that up to the initial state. And then we can make that start after the title wrapper has come in. So we're gonna select move, set this back to zero, set the opacity to uh, 100 and then make sure we have some kind of easing on there as well, just to make it a little bit more smooth. And then let's have a little preview. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. And then let's just do a similar thing for, for this. Maybe this can uh, coffee kind of stain that I um, included as part of the design can kind of start from a little bit off screen. Um, yeah, I don't really like how that moves in either. So I think I'll just have the coffee stain kind of fade in. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. And then finally, let's just have a look at the social media wrapper at the bottom. And again, let's just have that kind of move a little bit um, to the right hand side. Make sure it's in the initial state. Set the opacity down to zero. Make sure it's initial state again. And move. Set this to zero. So it goes back to its original position. And set the opacity to 100. Yeah, so that's all looking pretty nice. So then once we're done, we can just hit save. And then once we hit preview, we can see that everything's kind of fading in nicely uh, as we kind of wanted to. And that's really just uh, the very, very basics uh, interactions set up on Webflow. There's way more stuff that you can do with all these different triggers. You can do stuff on page scroll, um, when you hover a certain element and things like that. But I just wanted to give a, a kind of whirlwind tour um, for those who are just starting out because once you grab the basic concepts of the interactions, it doesn't really matter regardless of what, what trigger you, you pick, the concept and the process is very much the same. So you can just take what you've learned in this tutorial and basically play around with different different triggers. So let's say we wanted something to happen on the overlay, we can just add some kind of click trigger or scroll trigger, a few different page triggers that we can play with as well. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope that it helped you learn something new about Webflow and get the grasp of the kind of creation of basic interactions to make your website a little bit more exciting and a little bit more uh, dynamic as well. So if you did like this video, I have a couple more videos all about Webflow, about creating a portfolio and, and also uh, just understanding the very basics of Webflow. So make sure you go to check those out. And I also have some videos up all about creating your own blog on a platform called Ghost and then some other Notion stuff as well. So again, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you liked it, make sure to check out some of my other videos and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.